Now, I've had some people who are confused about uh, the vision thing. And then uh, they were like saying, well, it's God definitely used it. God definitely used it. My simple answer is basically this, is that God can use, God can use a demonic Bible, like the modern versions, to get a person saved. Uh, God used also the a demon, uh, God can use evil, wicked things to accomplish his purpose, you got to understand. Like Nebuchadnezzar, he's represented, symbolized as Satan, the Antichrist, the dragon. But the Lord used him to accomplish his goal at the end. So if there are some people, I mean, I believe this. Some of them, when I heard their testimony, they, it sounded like legitimately they were saved. They trusted in the blood of Jesus Christ alone. They were not trusting in their experience. So I can take it for granted what they say. I'll take them at their word for it. But you got to understand this. Just because it contributed to something good doesn't mean it's automatically good. You got to understand that. Because God can use wrong things, evil things, for his glory. So you got to understand that. The point is this. The point is how you can tell what's right and wrong is what the Bible says. That's the important thing. There are a lot of people who get into rock music and contemporary music. And they said that they brought them closer to Jesus, what not. Uh, maybe they even changed their lives. All right, I won't deny that. But the point is this, just because it's something bad doesn't mean it's something that God approves of it. Like, for example, Billy Graham, he wants thousands of souls to salvation. That's a great thing, what he's doing. So I guess it's okay to compromise with religious leaders so that he can win more souls to salvation. See, something good, does something bad doesn't justify you for doing it rightly and just because it brings a good result doesn't make it right. The point is, what does God say? That's what makes it right. You understand. So I'm going to, I said all this because there's a lot of people who depend upon tongues. They depend upon visions, healings, and all sorts of other signs. And you got to understand this. These type of people, they're very difficult to talk to. And you can tell that such people are truly embodied going by faith in what they actually experience, not the Word of God. Because whenever I mention the Word of God to them, the Bible says this, the Bible says that, what makes me feel very uncomfortable is that they would, that they would say, you might know all the Bible stuff like that, but you don't know what I've been through, stuff like that. If you've only been there and seen it, then you'd understand. But see, what that's, when they say that, basically that translates to, it doesn't matter what, how much Bible you know or what the Bible says that you show me. You should know what I've been through, what I felt. See, that, that's showing faith in what? It's showing faith in their experience rather than the Word of God. That's scary. So I said all this to stress that fact because I want people online to understand this. So... How do we know that this is not available today? Well, we know this. One, if you look up every time that the Bible mentions the word tongue, it's referring to a different language. Just look up the word tongue in every verse in the Bible, okay? That's one case. Number two, look at the first mention of sign. Look at the first mention of sign. It was mentioned to the Jews. God originally started it for the Jewish people. Exodus chapter 3 and Exodus chapter 4. Not only that, 1 Corinthians 1.22 says Jews require a sign. Not only that, John chapter 2, I believe it's John chapter 2, Jesus said that unless you Jews see a, see a sign, you will not believe. See? Not only that, the Bible shows that the signs, they belong to the apostles. The Bible specifically says signs of an apostle. Mark 16, they all use that passage. But you'll notice that the context, who is he speaking to? The 11 disciples. But it says the signs will follow them that believe. Yeah, apostles who believed in it. Because in the verse, by context, it said that the 11 apostles had problem with believing. So Jesus Christ urged them the importance of believing so that they can have the signs. 2 Corinthians 12, 12 also said the signs of an apostle were wrought among you. But not only that, if... If Christians truly participated in the signs and wonders, if they truly participated in it, why would they go to the apostles for healing? See, they couldn't do it themselves. Another case right here is because if you look at the book of uh, 1 Timothy, 
The Bible shows that the healing signs were fading away. Amen. Signs were fading away. How do you know that, preacher? Because Paul, he told Timothy to take medicine. He didn't heal him. Not only that, uh, the Bible shows in the book of Philippians, Paul was worried about this person in the church being sick unto death. Why would he be worried if he had the healing power? Another thing is that he also mentioned at the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, he mentioned that he left uh, Trophimus at Miletum sick, so he couldn't heal him. But the most convi uh, another convincing one is that Paul, could, Paul, who had all the signs and power, couldn't heal himself. Why is that? Because the healing signs faded away. They're gone. There's no doubt about that if you read the later books of the Apostle. What's extremely evident is you got more than 1,000 years of church history. They weren't doing signs. Where, where were the signs during that time? See? So there is no doubt healing signs faded. Another case in point right here is that the Bible says uh, that we walk by faith, not by what? All right, that is important. You know what's very important? This is a heart issue here. Now, I want, charis I want those charismatic to sincerely look at their heart. All right, this is a heart issue, not all this issue. This is a heart issue here. You truly go by faith, not by sight. Is that really the case? Because when, you dis uh, when I talk to some people, they go so much by what they see. Oh, if you are only there, what, so that I saw it happen? Oh, if you, uh, because I saw Jesus, and you can't tell me that, I mean, what was that? Is that a, by what you see right here? See, it's all by sight. Whenever I hear healing, healing, uh, speaking in tongue, vision, vision, etc., etc., this is all sight here. We walk by faith, not by sight. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the what? Romans 10, 17. Thus, this shows me right here, you go more by sight that conflicts with the Word of God. That's something, it's troubling. It's, what's especially troubling is whenever I would mention verses and stuff like that, they would be in denial based on what verse? What's your scriptural evidence? There is no scriptural evidence they would argue against that. So that should be scary. That should be scary. So this is definitely a hard issue right here. Well, you, well I, it doesn't make sense why Satan would do it in that manner, in that way. Why would vision, healing, and speaking in tongues be wrong if it gets me saved? Why would Satan want me to get saved? I, there are some people I talk to about that. There are some people when they desperately pray to God, and then somebody laid their hands to heal, and then they got healed. You can't tell me that's of Satan, because I was praying to God about it. See, all this kind of stuff, they're, what they're doing is they're, they're trying to find spiritual excuses so that they can justify the signs. Yeah. But you got to realize this, anybody nowadays can find spiritual excuses, yeah. spiritual reasons for bad things that they do, for wrong things. Yeah. Just because there are spiritual excuses doesn't make it right, remember. Yeah. Remember, Satan, he's the greatest deceiver. He mingles the things of God, spiritual things of God, with something wrong. So that's important to understand right here. Well, why would I get saved then? That doesn't make sense to me. Simple. God can use wrong things to, for his glory. But Satan, he has a different purpose in mind. He wants you to feel the way that you still are right now so that you won't be having the faith grounded in the word of God, but more by what you see. And when you go by what you see, there's going to come a day when the healing won't happen, that the vision won't happen, and then you're going to think that God let you down. And then I've seen a lot of Christians become atheists because they didn't see miracles happening. That's right, wow. See, this is important to understand. Satan's not, not a dummy. He's thinking 100 steps ahead, 10 years ahead. So this is very important to understand. So case in point right here. So we see right here throughout all these points that there is no doubt that all of this shows that tongues, healings, and visions, they're no longer available. So they're definitely gone. We go by the word of God. That's our practice. Now, I told you to turn to a specific passage, but I guess I won't be covering that. I'll do that in a separate video. But uh, I laid all this out. I think this is good what I did because I'm giving a full summary right here where I hope, where I hope that it will become more persuasive to the person to understand what they're basing their faith on. This Korean churches, you got to understand, is very infested, infested with this doctrine. Now, Korean churches is, 
is more heinous. You might say, what's the harm of all this, right? I'll tell you what the simple harm of all this is. The simple harm of all this is that it damned the nation of Korea. Now, I can say this because I wrote a doctorate paper on this. Some of you might not know this. But the reason why Protestant Christianity is all over Korea, the simple answer to that is because during those days, right after the Korean War, they were in need and in poverty and broken. So at that time, they needed something. What would entice them more than prosperity gospel mm -hmm. and promises of healing? That's right. Especially if those doctrines match with Korean shamanism. Yeah, that's good, brother. There's no doubt. Yonggi Cho, world's largest pastor, even his pastors could not deny the fact they confessed that uh, the practices and th that they have in their church, there's no doubt it relates to shamanism. Yeah. That's why they had those prayer mountains, the Korean churches. Korean churches, they have it a little differently from American charismatic churches. American charismatic churches, they might not see something wrong with that, but Korean charismatic churches, you can see a lot. Because if you know the history of Korea, it was embedded with shaman Buddhism. And Yonggi Cho, it, that's how he got so many people. How, how do you think he can fool a lot of people? When there's a practice that's similar with their cultural belief, their history. Shaman Buddhism. I mean, Yonggi Cho's brother, he's a Buddhist. I don't know if you knew that. He even confessed that at the newspaper. He said that Buddhism is another way to heaven. Yonggi Cho actually said that in the news. Wow. So you see that? So what's the harm of all this? Satan, he's not thinking about your one little life here. Mm -hmm. He's thinking a hundred steps ahead. What can I do to justify this movement? Ah, I can damn a whole nation of Korea. But not only that, it's not just Korea. Do you know what's the number one movement in Protestant churches that's growing like rapid wildfire? charismatic yeah, movement right. New age. it's charismatic movement that's the number one thing that's growing wildfire and didn't, didn't you know Satan will use that for the last days to deceive people yeah. so let's close it here let's look at mark 13 let's close this teaching with mark 13 and then I'll show you a different teaching all right let's look at mark chapter 13 Satan's ultimate goal is accomplished then Look at Mark chapter 13, verse 22. How little are you looking at? You're only looking at your own life. You've got to look at a big picture. A lot of people, the problem is they don't look at the big picture, yeah. what Satan's accomplishing. So look at Mark chapter 13. You know what this is all bringing up to? The new world order. That's right. This is all bringing up to the Antichrist kingdom. Now look at Mark chapter 13, verse 22. For false Christ, and false prophets shall rise, and shall show what? Signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. See, this is a great deception, that even elect, say people, if it were possible, could be even fooled. So this is why this thing is strong. But look at verse 21. They're claiming it as what? And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, what? Believe it not. I saw Jesus in my bedroom. What? Lo, here is Christ. Believe what? Believe it not. Oh, I saw Jesus Christ in my vision. Believe it not. Oh, Jesus Christ is in this room when I healed him and then I felt him and he touched my hand. No, believe it not. Well, when I was in a worship service, I was speaking in tongues and God was right there and I saw him. Believe it not. Believe it not. This is all bringing up to the end times. Why? Because I don't know if people understand this. Charismatics should believe this more than I do. If you went through this experience, then you know what? You understand that feeling of seduction and that, gr that strong hold on you where you feel like it's right. It's a strong thing. But we walk by faith, not by sight, not by feelings, not by the things of the flesh. It's all faith upon the Word of God. That's your substance.